Well, here we are back in Coast Guard headquarters, and we're coming down the home stretch of our leadership video series. And it's important that you hear from the senior most leaders in the Coast Guard. So joining me today is our Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, Master Chief Steve Cantrell. Master Chief, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Thanks, Adam. It's an honor to be here with you to talk about one of my most favorite subjects, and that's leadership. And, you know, I wanted to add that uh, one of our duties as senior leaders is to really help provide mission-ready Coast Guard men and women to get out there and do our mission. And as I've told leaders and across the service, it's one of our most primary duties as leaders, that we have to promote an innovative, energetic, and compassionate leadership for our folks, because we want them to trust us. And we need them to know that we got their back. Yeah. Great. So I'll just recap where we've been over the last few weeks. Uh, most recently, I was at Sector Lower Mississippi River uh, met with Chief Warrant Officer John Price, and, and John Price uh, picked on the leadership principle of knowing your purpose. And as a Marine inspector, uh, he looks at the value of the commerce that goes down the Mississippi River, but he realizes that flow would be impeded if we could not safeguard the flow of that commerce, and that's where his world of work comes in. Now, as we were getting ready to film that, we were caught in a deluge, and we were actually watching the Mississippi River rise. Uh, so we spent some time on the Coast Guard Cutter Kankakee. Uh, and when I asked one of their junior most seamen, I said, well, what do you do on the Kankakee? And the seamen said, well, I'm the one who makes sure that the Mississippi River is properly marked so over half a trillion dollars worth of commerce can go down the Mississippi River from an E3 and the Coast Guard, who was out there bushwhacking poison ivy, fending off snakes and bees and everything else imaginable. They know their purpose. We met with uh, EM3 Erica Carey. She is an EM3 on the Coast Guard Cutter Willow. Her leadership principle was standards matter, and as a junior petty officer in the Coast Guard, she felt it was essential that we have a consistent and repeatable playbook of standards uh, that allow her to be a junior leader and also what she can aspire to be a leader in the future of the Coast Guard as well. Uh, we had the opportunity, and both of us were there, as we celebrated the recognition of our enlisted active and reserve persons of the year, uh, BM1, Evan Ward, and MKC, Wilton Terry. Uh, and they picked the topic of trusting and empowering others. Uh, and here they have been recognized as the preeminent enlisted members of our entire workforce. Uh, and it really made them think about what it means for them to be future leaders in our organization. And it all begins with trusting and empowering others. And they realized that they probably would not have had that recognition had not their leaders trusted and empowered them to be the leaders that they are today and obviously the great leaders that they're going to be tomorrow. And then just Friday, we closed out at Sector New York. Uh, and, and I met with Lieutenant Yvonne Yang uh, and she picked the leadership principle of take decisive action. Now, she took decisive action and went on temporary separation for a year and a half so she can hike across the sub-Sahara into places of Indonesia, but really find her purpose in life as well and came back a much better leader. Um, but she is one who takes decisive action uh, in a very large sector, and she does that through working with and through other people as well. So when I look at just those anecdotes of people in our Coast Guard taking our principles of leadership and how they apply in their everyday life, I now look at your initiatives. And now we have a leadership continuum for our entire enlisted workforce, something we have not had in 225 years. And I want to applaud your efforts, Master Chief, as we grow the next generation of leaders of the Coast Guard. Thank you, sir. And it, it was a labor of love. And I'll tell you, uh, looking over the discussions that you had with these folks, one of the things that was evident real early was that they all cited leadership and strong leadership at just about every level, regardless of rank, regardless of mission area. But something else that I keyed in on was uh, the mentorship discussion that they talked about and how important that was to them. Uh, and you and I both know that leadership, mentorship, it really requires a lot of self-reflection and for us to ask those questions once in a while of how are we doing as leaders? Are we compassionate? Are we confident? Are we setting a good example and providing our folks with the stuff that they need? And, you know, we're teaching leadership in the school rooms of our leadership courses, mm -hmm. but what I'm really hoping for is that uh, we're talking about leadership on the mess deck and the chief's mess 
in, in the ward room and just out and about as folks are getting about uh, their day-to-day -day lives. And which is going to kick off, we've got a, a series coming up next month about mentorship where we're going to have our senior enlisted leaders talk about why they chose this role, but more importantly, who influenced them. Because I really firmly believe that all of us had that one someone, some mm -hmm. point in our careers that uh, had such a huge impact on their, on their lives, and they might not have even known it. Uh, but we wanted to be like them. So I'm interested to hear from our senior enlisted, our goal badges, to uh, who was that person for them and how it shaped the leaders that they've become today. And I couldn't be more proud of, of who they are and them looking behind and setting a really good example for our young men and women that are coming mm -hmm. in today. Yeah, I certainly share your enthusiasm, your optimism, and the fact that we have a template out there of what it means to lead. And I'm especially encouraged because everyone in this organization aspires to lead, even at the most junior levels in the organization. Uh, and the reason they aspire to lead, like you mentioned, is they see great leaders in this organization, great role models, and they aspire to be like those individuals as well. So it's all about building character, but more importantly, building leaders. And as I look back on our video series, I'm pretty darn happy with the caliber of leadership that we have in the United States Coast Guard. But I think as you and I realize, we are the ones that set the bar for all others. And so I am delighted to have you at my right hand to be my leadership go-to person. Okay, so thank you so thank much. You. It's my pleasure as well. Okay, thank, thank you. you.